morning, everybody. Todd Metalhead, Weatherman here. Hopefully, everyone's doing well. We got some good news ahead here. We're starting to see a little bit more of a slowdown in severe weather. Yesterday, there weren't any tornadoes. There were damaging wind and hail reports, of course. But it does look like we have some light at the end of, of the uh, tunnel here because on Thursday, I've seen something I haven't seen in a very long time. No severe. Hoping that this remains the same over the course of the next couple of days because we've been long overdue for a break as a country for as a whole for the lower 48. But especially over towards the plains here, not seeing much in the way of activity. Loving to see that. But anyway, though, as far as severe weather today, we do have a slight risk. We have a couple areas of interest, one that stretches through a good chunk of Minnesota, includes the Twin Cities here, goes through Iowa goes through parts of Nebraska and parts of eastern Kansas here. The main threat for today up from that northern portion is going to be damaging winds and hail. Tornado threat is going to be rather minimal, I would say. But we do have a marginal risk area that stretches from Des Moines, Iowa, all the way towards Wichita, and mainly staying west of Lincoln and Omaha at this point. We do have Kansas City in there as well. And then our secondary area is down towards the south of Oklahoma City in Norman here. So Fort Sill to Wichita Falls, there might be a chance of an isolated tornado today. We also have a damaging wind and hail threat over there with the hatched risk stretching all the way from Norman to Wichita Falls. So we could see some pretty large hail here. Then when we go to day two, threat downtrends to a marginal risk. Great to see that. I haven't seen a marginal risk in a while that has stayed a marginal risk, but this seems like we have a good shot at it. We have mainly just mostly the state of Ohio and then also parts of Michigan and a small portion of eastern Indiana in the mix here. So Cleveland, Springfield, Columbus, Youngstown, all you guys are in that marginal risk. Mainly this is going to be for damaging winds and hail. There is not a 2% tornado threat we could talk about at this time and there actually isn't even a hail threat at this point. There was one when I looked at it the uh, late last night but in any case, though, as we mentioned, day three, severe weather threat. There isn't a highlighted area at this time. And then on days four through eight, predictability is too low. So there is still chances of severe, but not a lot of confidence in it right now. So we'll have to see how things trend out with this one. But in the short term, it looks like we're starting to finally, and I mean finally, slow down, which is great news. Go ahead and take a look at the 500 millibar map here. Getting a look at what our mid-level and upper-level jet is looking like as well. We do have a decent looking trough for today set up, but with it being so far to the north here and the forcing not being incredibly strong around our areas of interest, I wouldn't expect a widespread outbreak of any kind. You still, like I said, you still can get storms with setups like these, but it's going to be far less numerous in the ways of coverage here. Pretty strong winds will be expected on the back side of this, though, so be prepared. I'm pretty sure a lot of people won't be complaining, considering that we're getting into summertime. And that breeze is always helpful. But in any case, as we go forward here, you also see a really big ridge starting to develop over here towards the southwest. We'll talk more about that later and the impacts that that's going to have. But also... This is what's going to help change the temperatures out here towards the southeast with the way this trough is setting up here. Could increase shower and storm activity over here over the course of the next few days here. And then, of course, as we continue to go forward here, we see a couple more chances to follow up. And with that, with this trough hanging around here, it's going to keep the temperatures rather cool for this time of year. Normally, we're getting into the 80s at this point in Atlanta. We might not might not quite get there. The same can be said for the Ohio Valley and even the Northeast. So we could be dealing with some pretty nice weather here. I do see an interesting feature that's been popping up in the last couple of runs. It's been a little, uh, it's a, it actually has the look of a tropical disturbance here. We'll probably have a tropical outlook a little bit earlier than scheduled. I originally had it scheduled for Saturday, but one thing I've been paying attention to is this one little feature that's been popping up here on the operational run. We'll verify this. We may even do it later today, but over towards the Baja, it actually looks like we have something that tries to pop off here. You do get 
an additional area that low pressure that pops up here which is somewhat uncommon for the eastern pacific here typically when we get storms to develop especially to earlier in the year towards this region because hurricane season starts may 15th in the pacific these usually just go out to sea a little bit different look this time coming from the uh, gfs here we're of course have we of course have been having the euro over here on the bottom left corner and we've been comparing the whole time but still fact of the matter is i find it interesting that we've been seeing that feature popping up the last couple of runs here so definitely something to pay attention to watch by the middle part of the day that runs almost going to be irrelevant but in any case though does look like uh, the pattern stays pretty tame from that point we actually look like we start to get into a what will be called an omega block where storm activity will be a little bit more limited not impossible but we may even see some setups start to favor the northeast potentially down the line it's a question mark because obviously we're past 10 days out really starting to get in the no man's land at this point but as we continue to go forward here we do start to see a little bit more in the way of activity and i think the northern plains will eventually start to will eventually start to uh, pick up here as we get towards the middle of the month timing is going to be a key component to these severe weather setups if they do end up occurring and then after that we start to see that ridge really start to kick in over here towards the southwest and this is also going to help keep the weather pattern kind of fair whenever you see a zonal look like this it does kind of limit storm activity here there may be thunderstorms that develop here, but it's not going to be quite as favorable. This is also going to flip the pattern here. Eventually, it's going to be really warm out to the east here and then cooler, a little bit cooler out to the west here. We're mainly going to end up in a very dominant warm pattern here if this verifies. And I have pretty good reason to believe that this will at this point. So getting it continuing along with the severe weather dynamics here, we're going to start out with the dew points here and then we're going to shift over towards the temperatures because this is going to become a pretty big topic over the course of the next few months. But in the short term, at the very least, as far as our severe weather setup for today is concerned, plenty of moisture available. No surprises there. And then over the course of the next couple of days, notice how we've typically had 60 degree dew points here we're finally starting to lose some of that moisture here so we're catching a break at long last it looks like there's still plenty of moisture available in the deep south and i think this is where our predictability to low areas are going to remain but forcing is going to be a key component to severe weather and we just aren't going to really have that same kind of forcing that we had in the last within the last couple of months april and may where we had these mega troughs coming in and pretty much chumming up the atmosphere increasing instability and allotting for severe weather and tornado outbreaks so we're going to be a little bit more limited in that and i am definitely not complaining eventually the moisture of course will return it's but in any case though we're of course a little bit more uncertain as to how things will pan out in the long run but in any case though over the 10 to 16 day period we do have a really strong moisture return that's partially going to be due to that trough that's coming in it's going to help pull some of that gulf of mexico moisture back into the fray here all right so shifting over to the climate here there's going to be some big changes with this uh, upcoming pattern here so interestingly enough with that trough as we mentioned before we have heightened probabilities of below average temperatures mainly over towards the ohio valley and just really the eastern half of the u.s as a whole here towards the deep deep south and into florida texas towards southern texas in particular we're still dealing with the high probabilities of above average temperatures here but the chance of rain may start to increase over towards these areas too so might be in a little bit of a middle ground there i am concerned with florida because it has been pretty dry over here as well towards southern texas it's kind of been a mixed bag southwestern texas has been kind of a hotbed for storms but has also been a little bit dry and then over towards southern and eastern Texas, it's been a mixed bag as well. Also note the increased area of, and very large area, might I add, of heightened above average temperatures probabilities out towards the west here. So definitely seeing the look of a positive PNA setup here. 
typically when I would see this, I wouldn't be too concerned with severe weather, but it's really more so the positioning of the trough that I think is going to come into play here and maybe increase chances towards the deep south here. So definitely still want to remind you guys to keep your eyes open on that. So let's go ahead and continue over to the precipitation here. And when we take a look at that, interestingly enough, the western plains are pretty active. And then also the northeast is pretty active as well. Of course, towards the northwest, the trough seems to be kind of pushing north of the border when it enters in. And then, of course, we see this dip back down into the eastern half of the U.S. So it's going to keep a lot of these guys a bit drier than average here. So not surprised to see that. Northeast, of course, with that setup, it kind of favors a little bit more moisture towards them. But there is some good news, by the way, for folks in Florida over here and towards southwestern Texas. Even if the severe weather probabilities start to drop off, we still have chances of rainfall there, and we also have chances of rainfall in Florida. So any of our potential drought woes over here, this may not completely solve them, but it will get you some much needed rainfall. How much is still to, is uh, still in question at this current point in time here? But seeing that we're in the above average category here, definitely a better sign than being in the brown there. And then also the interesting thing to make note of here is as we continue to go forward to 8 to 14, while some of the confidence probabilities drop off, the pattern looks like it kind of holds here. So pretty consistent to what we saw in the 6 to 10 day outlook. It's pretty much going to hold out through 8 to 14. So we'll have to see how we go, how we look through the middle of the month. But in any case, though, I'd say we're looking pretty good. Same can be said on the precipitation map here does look like we start to get a little bit of a push drier air and a little bit a little bit quieter weather over here towards the uh, Tennessee and Ohio valleys as we continue to go forward here so we're going to eventually see a change in the trend it's just going to be a little bit after the back half of the month so that being said let's go ahead and take a look at our current drought monitor here and of course over towards where what southwest Texas is southern Texas of course, Florida have been points of interest. Oddly enough, West Kansas, even though there's been a lot of storms over this area, is still pretty dry at the moment. But I do think that we're still going to have a pattern that's going to lock for showers and storms to develop over the region. Could be summertime st storms more so than an organized frontal boundary. But in any case, though, seeing these areas in the above average category in regards to predicted precipitation is definitely a good sign. Out towards the northwest, though, that's a little bit different there, unfortunately. I wish I could give you guys some rainfall here, but unfortunately, right now, the pattern's just not really calling for it. We'll see how things go from that point, though. Keep in mind, though, this was released at the end of last month, so this may not look exactly the same because there has already been some storms over here towards parts of New Mexico and also Southwest Texas. And we're eventually gonna to start to see our action over here towards Florida, especially towards Southern Florida Peninsula. In any case though, let's go ahead and take a look at the temperatures here, rambled enough about that. So here is what we're dealing with currently. It's pretty warm across the board here, especially over towards Texas, towards the Southern Plains as a whole. But watch what happens as we get towards the eighth and beyond. This is the sixth that we're looking at now. Notice how that warm air is slowly starting to build out west and then eventually out towards the east. We start to see that warm air begin to retreat a bit. We still get some 70s, we still get some 80s, but not quite as intent, but not quite in the, bun in the same kind of abundance as we've been seeing. We still see those above average temperatures even getting into Florida. We're getting well into the 90s at this point. As we get towards mid month, we end up seeing a little bit of a cool down doesn't last for too long though it looks like eventually we do get into the mid 90s in the deep south starts even seeing some hundreds by the time we get into the middle of the month here so at least for a few days though we will get a little bit of a cool down but right after that we're going to be into the brass tack so to speak so prepare yourselves it looks like it's going to eventually get really hot over here towards the east but at least we get one final cool down before that gets going. But in any case, as we go beyond that point, 
GFS is just looking, simply put, hot, hot, and more hot. So get ready for that. And then also, we're starting to even see the 110s here as we get towards the southwest here. So heat advisory, heat warnings, excessive heat warnings, going to start to become something we talk about a little bit more here on the channel. So that being said, like I said, prepare yourselves. If you have it any threat of increased humidity definitely make sure you're watching that as well so as we continue to go forward here looking at the precipitation map so of course over here towards the southeast we're starting to get those summertime thunderstorm setups here so we could always get these popcorn looks here this is where our severe weather threat is going to be for tonight as we mentioned before not expecting a major event but still need to be on the lookout any risk is worth watching and then as we continue to go forward from that point, mainly we start to look a little bit more quiet in, in the uh, bigger picture here, so to speak. So we continue to go forward. We do have a couple other systems that come in. I don't expect anything magnanimous to come out of that. Next setup that's kind of notable looks like it's going to be more towards Saturday here. Then after that point, we just see these little scattered storms type setups over here eventually this is where we get florida coming into the action as well especially as we get closer towards the mid-month and then after that we also see the northeast getting into the action here eventually the setup begins to calm down for a brief period all the way up until the 14th where we start to see a little bit increased activity towards the northern plains after that point we start to become a little bit more zonal we still even have an area of snow over here towards montana this is of course towards the higher elevations so wouldn't expect anything towards the valleys here so to speak so wouldn't get too excited but still snow in june that's pretty impressive actually if i were to say so myself for this time of year of course it is brief nonetheless but with that Gulf of Mexico starting to surge back up, especially as we get towards the back half of the month, we of course will start to see a little bit more of increased shower and storm activity, especially over towards the Gulf Coast states here. And that's going to continue throughout this run. But in any case, though, that's all I got for you guys in this video. I appreciate you guys being here. Appreciate uh, all the support we've gotten over the last couple of months here. We does look like we'll get a little bit of a break in the action make sure you stay tuned there will be of course tropical outlooks coming very soon especially with uh what we're seeing over here towards the the uh western states here with whatever that could end up being but in any case i'll see you guys in the next one again appreciate you guys being here make sure you hit that like button smash that subscribe button and i'll see you next time